Linebackers are the most underrated position in football, and they shouldn't be. We're going to tell you why on the next episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you already know who it is. It's your boy, Damian Parson, on the ones and twos. You can find me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. And you already know what time it is. I got my boy to chat with me. We're here in Indy. Keith, talk to him, baby. What's up, man? We're in Indy. This is Keith Sanchez, Senior Draft Analyst at the Draft Network. And like I always say, man, 2019 National Champ. Yes, that means we're having champ talk here. We're here to bring you championship level content perspective and philosophies when it comes to the NFL Draft. And DP, we got a rather interesting one this week, right? Because we're talking about the linebackers, man. And before our listeners cut it off, because we know that linebacker is the overlooked position now, we want to talk about why linebackers matters um, to your defense overall, man. So let's go ahead and get into it. Keith, linebackers, I think you said this on the, on the podcast about a week or so ago. Now, linebackers are the running back of the defense, whereas the, the position that's been devalued to where fans don't believe that we that they need one and, and, and just the media don't talk about them, you know, or discuss them enough, right? But you, you don't know that you need one until you don't have one, Keith. And that's how it is with linebackers, similar to running backs. And no, they, they are underrated. They're very much that needs to stop because Keith, at the end of the day, to stop the run, you don't just need a dominant defensive line. Right. You need second level defenders that can fill those gaps, right? You need guys that can scrape and stay clean. Right, be able to shoot through those gaps and make plays in the backfield. Right, play with in intensity, instincts, and physicality. Right, and, I, and and Keith, we all we know how much we've seen it with like Bill Belichick. Right, Bill Belichick will pull linebackers off the field and run two more safeties on the field. He have like two big dime safeties as dime backers and at the second level of his defense to help cover tight ends and whatnot. But Keith, in the run game, that leaves you susceptible because. Those guys are typically 210, maybe 215 at the safety spot, yeah, where linebackers are 225 big. on up. They're not very big, Keith. So if you're worried about these guards pulling up to the second level, getting to your linebackers, what do you think they're going to do when they get a hold of your safety? So linebackers are so – they are more important than people really believe, Keith. No, I agree. And that's why. So I know our listeners were wondering, right, because by this point, you know, we've went through every position over the past week and a half. And, you know, we saved linebackers for last. And I know people might have been. I wonder if they're going to do linebackers. And the question is, hell, yes, we're going to do linebackers because we understand the importance, man. When it comes to X's and O's, like DP said, man, you have people that fill in. You have your defensive line, right? They're responsible for certain gaps. But then those linebackers are responsible. And DP, I, let's let's talk to our listeners, right, because on our way out here, man, um, if it, everybody knows ESPN just dropped the 30 for 30 um the the Baltimore Ravens their 2000 team the 2000 uh Super Bowl champion team um you know they just dropped the documentary and Ray Lewis man when you talk about the importance that that guy had to the team because it was not only his play right but it was setting the tone your your, your linebackers they're usually the nastiest people on your defense man and that's what Ray Lewis was right you talk about you know quarterbacks wide receivers running backs and the, we talk about the Baltimore Ravens possibly the best defense of all time to ever play in the NFL and their best player was an inside linebacker, and everybody knew it. So it, I was sitting on the plane, man, on the way out here, and I'm going to be honest. I got excited to talk about linebacker play, right? Because when you talk about in the run game, we talked about that, but think about the pass game, right? You think about how they have to drop in the coverage when they, you know, these these famous cover two schemes, and, you know, those linebackers have to get a lot of depth, right? Then you think about a guy like Luke Keekley and how he was so – um you know, heralded because he can drop into coverage and he understood, you know, passing route concepts and, and route combinations. And that made that uh, Carolina defense so dangerous. So for me, DP, I was like, man, we have to talk about this linebacker play because it is such an underrated position. And not only that, we have some pretty good linebackers 
in this class. So I, I definitely wanted to get into the linebacker play. And uh, coming up next, man, we're going to talk about some of the linebackers in this class that we think have the opportunity to make a real impact when we're talking about being day one starters next year for an NFL team. The number one sportsbook in America is FanDuel. And guys, if you are new customers, this is great news for you because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on everything from money lines, point spread, player props, what have you, exclusive bets. You can do a lot of different things with uh, FanDuel Sportsbook as well as you know, getting the opportunity to combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with fanduel. <clears throat> Keith, you, we, we, as you talk about just really in discussing the linebacker position, you said that to kind of really get into the linebacker class, we have some good guys in this group, Keith. And, and, and what's so funny is the versatility that we have, right? Different body types, different skill sets, athletic profiles. Because you think probably the most athletic guy is down in Clemson, right? Mm. From Trent, Trenton Simpson. Got a build of a safety, but he he moves like it too, right? And at the second level of the defense, Keith. But who, what is this? What was, what, talk to me what, and really discuss one of these linebackers that have caught your eye uh, this draft cycle. Yeah, so I, I mean, linebacker play to me is very similar to the safety play um, from the perspective of, man, it, you have to watch the film to understand their impact and then also understand that this position, the things that they they do and, and the reason why some of those, those players are great is the uncoachable things, right? And so I'm going to go with instincts and I'm going to go with Alabama linebacker Henry Toll Toll, man. You're talking about a guy that transferred from Tennessee to the University of Alabama and every year he has consistently gotten better, right? When it comes to production, man. You're talking about a guy that flies sideline to sideline, manning a Nick Saban defense, right? And, and I'm going to be honest, right? We know that Alabama, they have a long history, right? Since before Reuben Foster, I think Rolando McClain, right? Might have been the first one that came out 15 years ago. That was that quote unquote Alabama a linebacker and so ever since then they've had a run on you know linebackers going in the first two rounds but to me Henry Toto is a little bit different because he's a little bit more modern right like he's probably right at the 230 threshold but this guy is so fluid so smooth so smart so when it comes to just making those smart plays that when you're a fan and you're sitting there and you're like hell yeah that was a good play that's what Henry Toto is capable of so for me this is a guy that I've consistently mocked him in, in the first round, back into the first round in my, in my draft, right? Because I understand the importance of linebacker play. But I get it, right? Fans don't necessarily want a linebacker. It's very similar to a running back in the first round. So if your team has the opportunity, and I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers or, you know, some of these teams that need good linebacker play, if your team has the opportunity to grab this guy in the second round, he is definitely someone to pick up because I think he's an immediate starter with high potential to be an impact starter as a rookie. Keith, I, I, I like that a lot. You know, I'm a big fan of Aaron Toa Toa. I want to stay in the SEC. A former Bama linebacker who he originally was an edge defender for Bama when he was recruited there and transferred over to Arkansas. Uh, and, and that's Drew Sanders, man. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you talk about having a prototypical build, a good trigger downhill, athletic guy. But Keith, this is a copycat league. And the reason why I really like this young man is we know – Teams have looked at the success of a Micah Parsons, a, a, Bear, a Baron Browning for Denver. You know, everybody knows Micah Parsons is the linebacker edge hybrid for the Dallas Cowboys. But looking at, you know, and, and really observing what Baron Browning is able to do for the Denver Broncos, and it's like, man, having that guy that has the athleticism to play stop backer in the run game, then walk him up on the edge and rush him off the edge. And Drew Sanders is a more of a natural edge anyway in terms of his actual play style skill set even his play history and experience coming into college right he was a edge recruit to alabama but the edge room was so loaded but so he's developed and and, and really kind of taken some nice strides at the linebacker position this is the copycat league man and i think drew sanders has a chance especially down here in indy to show his, his versatility right the 40 yard dash the, the short shuttle and the agility drills be able to show the burst 
off the ball, but then also when you get into those linebacker drills, right, the W drill, you know, you know all the different uh, pass coverage drills, whatever it's the L drill, whatever it is that they're going to put them through and sort of drop him back in the coverage, showcase that ability as well because if he is a stack backer and he can comfortably drop off into these, these zones and get into the passing windows, that holds value, Keith. But then on those third and longs, right, if you're yeah. just like, okay, yeah, he's able to drop back, but then I can walk up up on the line. I can put him up on the edge mm. and rush this big boy and let him go out, get, let him be natural and be the Drew Sanders that he came into college to become and let him go get the quarterback. At the end of the day, I said it twice. I'm going to say it for the third time for those in the back. This is a copycat league. And guys like Drew Sanders kind of fit that mold of Baron Browning of Michael Parsons that you want to have that versatility. Even the Jamie Collins when he came out of college. He played stack backer. He rushed off the edge. Dante Hightower, another Bama backer, right? We talked about Rolando, Rolando McLean. He did some of that, right? He would play stack backer and drop off and mug the A-gaps. Then he would rush off the edge too, Keith. Yeah, no, I agree. So let's let's talk about one more guy, man. And this is a this is an old school linebacker. I think in the eighties, uh, this this guy will probably be a top ten or top fifteen pick. And that's Iowa linebacker Jack Campbell, man. You're talking about. I think he's listed at 6'4", 250 pounds. This is a a B gap to B gap thumper, right? What you need those with these teams running these different type of read option plays. You know, getting more verse in, in their downhill running game. You're starting to see power, right? Gap scheme is starting to come back more into the NFL. So you need these guys that are going to come downhill that's willing to take on offensive guards interior offensive linemen knock them back shed them and then get to the running back so jack campbell for me dp is a guy that listen i'm I'm not going to slay him a first round guy i'm I'm not sure if i I want him in a second round right but if you're talking about a a, a third round fringe starter in the sense of the fact that first and second down player well i think like i said he can cover b gap to b gap i really like jack campbell i think he can do um exactly what some teams need And and we see that those teams that saw Soft up the middle is one of two things, right? If your team can't stop the run, I guarantee you, you have a soft interior defensive line combination or you have some soft linebackers in the middle. Like, that's just what it comes down to, right? Like, it's, it's those position positions that matter. And Jack Campbell is the exact opposite of right, that, right? He's going to come in. He's going to downhill. He's going to thump. And he's going to come in there and make some plays. But, DP, listen, man, coming up next, I want to talk about the versatility with the linebacker position because you kind of got into it with Drew Sanders being able to rush, you know, play stack backer. You talked about it a little bit with Trent Simpson, you know, lining up in a nickel. So coming up next, man, we're going to talk about the, the versatility that some of these linebackers in this class provides you and how you can move them around your defense. Versatility is king, Keith. The more you can do and, and having these different linebackers that can line up on the edge, they line up at stack, they can be a Sam, they can some guys can go in the overhang as a nickel defender and cover. And, and one guy that that, that that comes to mind that Keith, I'm, I'm really after Mobile, like I didn't get a chance to really dive into his tape before Mobile, but watching him at Mobile, like this kid's about to rise on my board. And that's uh, 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 I think I want to make sure I pronounce I always struggle with his name, Diane, Dan Henley, Diane, the Washington yes. State, yeah, like. Converted safety, Keith. And, and he, he looks the part, man. Explosive part. athlete. Physical. Like, I'm sitting there like, okay, because that, that's one thing you always wonder, right? When guys transition from playing deep to bringing coming down, like, okay, can you meet and match the physicality to play in those tight quarters in the front seven? And he because- showcased every bit of that. Yeah, and not only that, right? It, it happens a much quicker, right? Safeties that that's triggering from 12 yards, you have to understand. Now you have to make up your mind in four and a half yards, right? You only have that four and a half yard window versus 12 yards. So that's why it doesn't necessarily always translate, right? I I I really hate the notion of okay, a former safety and he's just automatically gonna play linebacker. It won't happen like that. And linebackers will tell you, like, man, listen. Don't disrespect the position like that. Don't just think you can add 10 pounds to a big safety and now he's going to be this all-American linebacker. But I agree with you, DP. Um, Dion Henley is one of those guys that I think is he's on his way to successfully making that transition um, to playing the linebacker position. But, DP, when we talk about versatility, we have to, you know, give our listeners what they want to hear, right? And I think what they want to hear is this. We had the conversation around Isaiah Simmons, right? He went top five and we talked versatile, mm-hmm. versatility. Uh, this guy can do it all, but then he gets with the Cardinals and it's a little bit of a struggle for him, right? So he he, he was a, a versatile player that transitioned into a positionless player that is making it hard for him to really find a home, um, you know, 
on the field, right, for the Arizona Cardinals. So I want to talk about what are some of the key things when it comes down to versatility as a football player and where you kind of weigh in the versatility versus positionless. Man, it, it goes instincts, right? Football IQ. To be able to read and process information quickly, Keith, from different alignments and different uh, spaces and different depth. Like you just talked about being able to read a run from 12 yards back is much different than reading it from four yards out. Yeah. You know, how much quicker you have to process that information. So it could, like being versatile, you can't be versatile and, and be put in a versatile space if you can't process quickly at multiple positions. Now, it does take reps to get there, right? And that's, that when you use the Isaiah Simmons thing, it's like, okay, that's what happens when you draft a kid and you don't have a plan. Steve Kahn and the Cardinals, former uh, staff drafted this young man, knowing that he was a jack of all trades, he was a Swiss Army knife, but they had no plan for him, Keith. They said, okay, we're going to play you at edge. No, we're going to play you at stack back, and we're going to put you at safety. Something's like, yes, that's how Clemson used him. But at the same time, you, if you want him to play one position, you got to let him play the position so he can learn it. So it's like the, the, the football instincts is probably the, the first step to showcase, to, to really bringing value from a versatile standpoint as a prospect, right? And then from a linebacker, someone like, okay, what does your physical frame allow you to do? And, and, and what does your athletic profile allow you to do to speak to being versatile? Yeah, and so I'm, I'm going to kind of go a little bit more in depth into the word instincts for the linebacker position because it's, it's kind of like O-line, right, where everybody like, you know, oh, that's a good play, but nobody really knows why it's a good play or what the hell is going yeah. on. So for, for linebacker play, man, I always look for linebackers that's attacking the line of scrimmage, right? They're moving forward. They're, they're making tackles close to the line of scrimmage because that lets me know that they're processing quickly, right? They're seeing things and they're able to, to trigger. When we talk about the key word key and diagnose, right? So they read their keys and able to diagnose the play and that allows them to attack down, you know, downhill, down the line of scrimmage. And that's when you see these big time hits by these linebackers, right? That's when you see these tackle for loss. That's when you see these linebackers in the backfield. And when the quarterback is still trying to hand the ball off to the running back, they're blowing stuff up. So, I just wanted to really give our listeners, you know, the key to like what is instincts, right? Especially for the linebacker position, man. And, and, and into that DP, I'm going to rattle off a couple guys, right? And I want to talk about the Marvin Overshaw, man. This is a guy like we just talked about, man. He made the transition from safety to linebacker, and we just talked about this, right? How do you make the transition? Now, I'll be honest, Overshaw early in his career, he struggled, right? Man, he looked like a former safety playing linebacker. But I think year after year after year, he's gotten better. And I'm at the point now where I have a, a specific position for him. And I think that's a weak side linebacker because this guy can flow. He can move. He has closing speed. He's fast. So I may not want him to play the inside linebacker position, but I think he's a very valuable asset at the weak side linebacker position. So I want to ask you, DP, is there any more guys when it comes down to versatility that kind of jump off to you um, that play the linebacker position? Man, Keith, like I, I think about you know where I talked about him earlier, and that was Trenton Simpson. But Keith, like in the mold of what, what are you with Trenton Simpson, man? Because it it he he came in and let's be honest, right? He he was a top ten pick. Like everybody was saying, mm -hmm. man, this he's the best player on Clemson defense, top ten, top fifteen pick. He's gonna test off the charts, and then now nobody wants to talk about him. So where where, where are you with Trenton Simpson right now? I think he's a you know a day two pick, Keith. You know second round. You know, you know, definitely I think he's a second round pick. Young man that, that like I said, he looks good. He looks the part to play play the position. He, he does have more of that safety esque build. He's an explosive athlete, has that sideline to sideline range. And the instincts for me from you know just watching him are pretty good. He was just used differently, like we as we talked about uh, I think with with Brian Brzee and Miles Murphy, no Brent Venables this year. Right. Like first year and it sucks for him because the first year Without Brent Venables, this is the year that he's getting ready for the NFL draft. Yeah, and that's that's tough, you know, right? Like, that's, that's tough. Like the, the dude that put style, you man. in position because he was kind of on that pseudo edge, kind of you know walk up to the edge linebacker too. Keith, like with, with Brent Venables, he looked like Micah Parsons that time, where they would blitz him off the edge, let him rush off the edge. He had a nice little dip rip move, and you know get underneath the, the arms and pad level of the tackles. And I'm like, okay. And then you see him at the second level being able to run and chase the ball and cut off, uh, meet you know, meet uh, the ball carrier at the apex on the perimeter, right? And then also playing in coverage, man-to-man, -man, dropping off, getting deep into zone spots and zone drops when they needed him to. He had a lot of those things, but it's like, man, he just – like the tape wasn't 
the best this year. But one guy Ooh. that I wanted to we talk about, you know, similar to him that I think could be kind of a riser a little bit is Owen Popo from Auburn, oh, right? Because yeah, he's got yeah. a similar build. He's a more natural linebacker because he's played the position. Now, he's had dealt with multiple defensive uh, coaches over the past couple of years as asking to do things differently year to year. So it's messed up, uh, slowed down his processing uh, in terms of being able to key and have eye discipline. But that athleticism, Keith, I've seen this dude on tape chase down on tape, chase down wide receivers that have a running start on him. You know what I mean? Catch the ball and they've taken off and they, they've hit zero to 60. And then he goes from zero to 100 and he chases them down, walks them down and, and, and makes, uh, you know, touchdown saving tackles and stuff like that. He drops off and into coverage as well, but he can blitz. Up. They, they blitz him off the edge. They blitz him through the A-gap. I think a defensive coordinator looks at this, can look at this young man and his physical skill set as a, a blank canvas that you can put to your defense and just say, man, let me just figure out how to use this young man. Let me be versatile with him. You can put him in the overhang and let him drop off. He can play a little bit of man as well. He can do different things, Keith. He just needs some stability with coaching. But here and here, as guys, we told you guys, we're here in Indy at the uh, NFL scouting, uh, scouting combine. <clears throat> I think for him coming out, I think he can test well and really showcase his skills and showcase his versatility, Keith. Yeah, so the the versatile players, man. Um, we, I, it reminds me of of last year, man. Penn State linebacker Brandon Smith, right? Another guy that was a a height, weight, mm, speed guy, ball. and then he he had the exact same issue, right? We talk about Trent Simpson, Demarvin Overshawn, to where he was playing that kind of outside overhang position, and then a the year that he was slated to get drafted, they moved him inside, right? And you've seen him struggle in, in, in process a little bit, and I think Brandon Smith dropped to the third round, um, and, and and some of these guys are third round picks at the end of the day, right? Yeah. And I think they are, but guess what, man? Third round picks, those are still assets. So at the end of the day, man, you're talking about we're talking about linebackers. We're talking about man. If you want high level linebacker play, go draft you some linebackers, right? You you you, almost, you have to spend the draft capital at the positions that you want to be talented at. At the end of the day, right? Because man, we watch these guys, man, and it, and it becomes clear from time to time a, a first round pick to a second round pick to a fifth and a sixth round pick, right? So the blue chip prospects are the blue chip prospects, and I know people are going to bring up the Tyreek Woolens that fell to the fifth. Well, guess what? Keith Sanchez, Damian Parsons, we had a second round grade on Tariq Willen. We knew he was a, a, a blue chip prospect, and that's not to toot our own horn or anything, but just to kind of you know allow our listeners to understand that hey, if you need linebacker play, go ahead and spend that draft capital on a linebacker. Because guess what, man? When it comes down to Super Bowl and you have a Nick Bolton and a Willie Gay making plays for your defense, you're gonna be really happy that you've done so. What with, with without question, Keith. Like you, you 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 hit the nail on the head. You're gonna be happy when you have these type of guys on your second level and they're going to help your defense. And they also help you on special team and do all the different things. That's an extra piece, an extra part of being versatile. But guys, as always, we thank y'all so much for making locked on NFL draft. Your first listen today on tomorrow's episode, we are going to be discussing and finishing the preview of the NFL combine. And it's going to come out the day of the combine, Thursday morning. We're going to be talking about it, guys, because we want y'all to know we're going to – me and Keith going to look at bets, talk about who's going to run the fastest. Oh, yeah, we're going to have fun tomorrow. High, we are going, going to have fun. some fun tomorrow. There might be some dinner that's going to be on somebody's tab with some drinks involved. Hey, and so we're not talking any dinner, fun. DP. We're talking St. Elmo's, baby. I'm talking about a $60 steak. I'm a T-bone, bone-in guy. Uh, Put it on medium for me. I'm just letting you know because I feel like I'm going to win majority of these bets. Okay. Listen, Keith, I, 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 I'm all for it. I'm all for some fun, some fun and friendly competition. But, guys, as we always tell you, please find us on YouTube. Smash the subscribe button. Smash – uh, the like, and also hit the hit the bell so you get all of the notifications so you can come back and enjoy all of the fire content we have. Locate us on your favorite audio podcasting apps, as always, so that you can subscribe, like, share, download, and leave a five-star review. We appreciate all the love. For Keith Sanchez, you can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code. I'm Damian Parson at DP underscore NFL. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Logged On podcast network your team every day